Hello everyone! In this video, Dr. Melek reviews the specifics of using facial anatomical landmarks for pediatric nasopharyngeal, airways, oral airways, and laryngoscope blade length selection. So let's dive in and review some airway basics. Okay, let's review using facial landmarks for sizing the pediatric nasopharyngeal airway, the oral airway, and laryngoscope blade length. The nasopharyngeal airway maintains an open airway by preventing the collapse of the nasopharynx soft tissues, which can cause airway obstruction. The nasopharyngeal airway is especially useful in patients who have an intact gag reflex, where an oral airway might trigger vomiting or aspiration. The ideal position of a nasopharyngeal airway is such that the tip of the airway is just above the epiglottis, ensuring that airway obstruction is relieved without causing trauma or discomfort. Choose a nasopharyngeal airway with an appropriate diameter that can comfortably fit into the patient's nostril. The diameter should be such that it does not cause trauma to the nasal passage. To determine the correct length, measure the distance from the patient's nostril to the tragus of the ear. The distance from the tip of the nose to the tragus of the ear approximates the proper nasopharyngeal airway length. The oral airway. The primary purpose of the oral airway in children is to maintain airway patency by preventing the tongue from covering the epiglottis and obstructing the airway in unconscious or semi-conscious children. The most appropriate oral airway size is estimated by 1. Placing the oral airway against the side of the face with the flange at the corner of the child's mouth. 2. The tip of the oral airway should reach the angle of the mandible. Pediatric Blade Length Selection an excellent clinical landmark for laryngoscope blade length selection for pediatric intubations is the distance from the upper incisor teeth to the angle of the jaw. When the blade, excluding the handle insertion block, is placed at the upper midline incisor teeth and the tip is located at the angle of the mandible within one centimeter proximal or distal, oral tracheal intubations are more consistently accomplished on the first attempt. Please note the insertion blocks of the blades. This portion is not included in the measurement. So, mom, like I was saying, Dr. Melick is the hottest boss I've ever worked for, and I'm absolutely loving this new job. Well, I better go and finish this presentation. Oops, so sorry. I didn't see y'all there. If you enjoyed this educational video, please subscribe to Dr. Melick's channel. Thanks for watching and have a great day.